solve. Just like the good old days, right? You just what? You solve the equation. How do you solve this? So the, the first thing I need to do to start getting the variable by itself is to do what? Ooh, I'm not going to do any division. Division is always your last step. Get rid of anything that is not attached to the variable needs to go. So I need to get rid of the minus 1.7. How do I get rid of that? I add it so that it cancels out. So add the 1.7. So now my equation, I have 0.25x equals what's on the other side? See, this is an exercise of size of adding decimals. So we get 6.6. .6. And then what do you do to solve this? Now we do division, so we divide by 0 0.25. So when I do the divide by the coefficient, these guys reduce to give me 1. And then I have this work that I need to do off on the side. So that's what you guys need to take care of. 6.6 .6 divided by 0.25. So let's set this up correctly. We have 0 0.25 is the divisor. Dividing into 6.6. .6. But remember, we don't want to divide by the decimal. We want to convert this and make it a whole number. How do I do that? Move the decimal over here so that moves it two spaces, right? How do I take care of that on the inside? move it not once but twice and when I do that I've got to put in this zero and my decimal goes straight up top like that and then what you're really doing is that you can kind of see this maybe in your mind you imagine it like this I'm really doing 25 divided into what number 660 right because I move the decimal two spots over so this should be easy enough. Dividing by 25 is nice. 25 doesn't go into 6, but it goes into 66 how many times? So that's 50. How many times does it go into 160? Six times. If you have a difficult time thinking about this, think about money. How many quarters could you have to make up 160? Six quarters, and then you have to have a dime. So that's 150. have a remainder of 10, but I need to add a zero here. So then 25 goes into 100 four times. So I'm done. And that means that my answer to all of this is x equals what? 26.4. Well, that's not too bad, is it? It's doing the same things we did with equations, but we have to pay attention to the rules for decimals. Same thing that happened with fractions in the last chapter. Okay? And really, when you think about the stuff that we've already done so far this semester, we can change all those guys and make them decimals to have it to be more fun, right? I see the look, Sam. You want fun. No. Okay, now she doesn't want it to be fun, but here's what you're going to do. You will do fun. You will do the fun that I give you. So if I give you this. 1.6 squared plus... 2.1 times 0 0.3 minus 
Oh no, evil! Yes, yes, I'm evil. So what are you going to do here? How do you simplify something like this? You remember to please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That's what she wants to do. So she's kind of crazy. Just please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. <laughs> so P. Parentheses. I've just got 1.6 in parentheses. Can I do anything with the 1.6? No. It's just 1.6. Exponents. That's the E. Do I have any exponents? What is it? 1.6 squared. Ooh, that's going to be fun, right? That doesn't mean multiply times 2. That means 1.6 times 1.6. I know, I know. Of course you do, Mr. Craig. You're the teacher. Do you guys know what it is? You've got to go up to the side and work it out, aren't you? So, if I come over here to the side and I work this out, 1.6 times 1.6 is really 16 times 16. And if you know your squares, you know the answer. But in case you don't, that gives you 96. This gives you 16. So we end up with 256. That can't be right. Where does my decimal point go? two places, so it should be 2.56, all right? So this is now 2.56 plus, let's rewrite everything that we have here. What's going to be the next stop along the fun train? Multiplication comes next, right? I'm not going to add the 2.56 and the 2.1 because this is the next part right here. Now, here's what I want you to think about. Let's see if you can do this in your head. If I did not have decimals here, and I just saw these numbers for what they were, which is 21 and 3, what's 21 times 3? That's 63. But how many decimal places would I need to have for the 63? Two. Two. So it would make this 0 0.63, right? So... Now, all we have is addition and subtraction, just like you had on your quiz, right? So when I put all of this together, well, how do you want to put this together? Maybe we just go ahead and add these first two guys right here. 2.56 plus 0.63. So let's see, 256 0 0.63 so there's the 9 1 3 is that what you got so 3.19 minus 4.93 before I even do the rest of this what do you know about your answer why is it going to be negative the larger number is negative. That means I need to just do subtraction. So again, I've got more scratch work that I need to take, a, take care of over here on the side. When you subtract, it's always the larger number, the 4.93, minus the smaller number, in this case, the 3.19. So in order for us to subtract, we borrow from this guy to make it an 8 to turn this into a 13. So there's 4. 7, 1. Is that what you guys got? So negative 1.74. Just like the good old days, right? Is there anything different from this order of operations from what, than what I did at the beginning of the semester? No. It's still the same. It's just with decimals now.